the White House in those 18 days. Was he still fulfilling his normal national security advisor duties? Yeah, I'm not going to get back into it. I will say, as I mentioned, the time. It's worrisome that he was still doing that when he was a potential target no, no, of Russian but, but blackmail. Can I just one thing that I think is important to know is, is let's look at again how this came down. A someone who is not exactly um, a supporter of the president's agenda, who a couple days after this first conversation took place, refused to uphold a lawful order of the president's, um, who is not exactly someone that, that was excited about President Trump uh, taking office or his, or his agenda. She had been, hold on, Caitlin, Kate, hold on, no, Caitlin, let me answer the question. She had come here, given a heads up, told us there were materials, and at the same time we did what we should do. Just because someone comes in and gives you a heads up about something and says, uh, I want to share some information. It doesn't mean that you immediately jump the gun and go take an action. I think if you flip this scenario and say, what if we had just dismissed somebody because a political opponent of the president had made an utterance, you would argue that it was pretty uh, irrational to act in that manner. We did what we were supposed to do. The president made ultimately the right decision, um, and I think he was proven that that. Uh, How that is she a political opponent? Of the president? She was. I. I, I, I General that he the appointed on. by the Obama administration and a strong opponent, a strong supporter of the of Clinton.